Hey guys, so I'm sure you heard about the recent release of the Sony Alpha 6700, and that's great. It's an amazing camera. However, the 6600 is still a fantastic camera, and I'm sure many of you will be looking to take advantage of the discounted price tags that are likely just around the corner. Now, I've learned a lot about this camera over the past four years, so I've made a series of tutorials specifically for this camera to show you how to do some of the things that aren't necessarily super obvious at first. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to record your camera screen using the Sony Alpha 6600. This particular method, which has worked the best for me personally, involves sending the signal wirelessly to your iPhone or iPad using the DJI RavenEye wireless transmitter. First, in your camera, go to Menu, Network, Control with Smartphone, Off. Next, go to Setup, Page 3, and turn HDMI Info Display on. This is the setting that allows you to see the camera menu, and not just what you see through the lens. There are a few quirks to this, which I'll get to in a minute, but just know that if you want to be able to see the camera menu when you're recording the monitor, you need HDMI info display turned on. One thing I like about this transmitter is that you can just pop it right there in the hot shoe mount. Next, we're gonna connect it using the HDMI mini to micro HDMI cable that came with the transmitter. Pull up the antennas and hold down the button until you see a red light come on. Wait until it turns blue. Now in this case, I've actually got another one plugged into the A7S III that you're looking at me through right now. So yeah, this one's just a prop, I guess. Now on your iPhone or iPad, download the DJI Ronin app from the App Store. Agree to the terms of use, join the project, don't allow notifications, allow local network connection, ask the app not to track you, allow it to use Bluetooth even though we're gonna have it turned off for this specific task. Close the app, open up settings, and turn Bluetooth off. Then connect to the RavenEye Wi-Fi. If you're prompted for a password, this can be found on the physical RavenEye device. Open the DJI Ronin app and click on RavenEye Camera View. Now, right now our screen's pretty cluttery with all this extra stuff. So we can click on this settings icon and turn off guide frame, aspect marker, safety zone marker, and center point and we're already looking much better. Next, to clean up the camera screen, open the menu, go over to Movie, page six, click on Display, Monitor, and make sure that no display info is checked, and click Enter. Now, when we press the Display button on the camera, it'll get rid of all that extra stuff on the screen. Earlier, I mentioned that there were a few quirks to this, so let's go over those now. When the camera's set to HD, you won't be able to see the camera monitor but you will be able to see it on the iPhone or iPad. When it's set to 4K, you will be able to see the camera screen, but after hitting record, it goes black. This is perfectly normal, so if this happens and you think your camera's broken, it's not. It's just how it is, and it's one of those quirks that Sony didn't quite hash out before the camera's release. It's actually a super common problem with most cameras. Now, on to the most important part, recording the camera screen. All you need to do here is a simple screen record on your iPhone or iPad. Upload that video to Google Drive, download it to your desktop, drag it into Premiere, and you're good to go. Now, if you're really looking to step up your game, find a high quality pic of the backside of the camera, use Gigapixel AI to enhance the image, bring it into Photoshop, erase the edges and the screen, re-import into whatever resolution you're working with. I shoot all this stuff on the a7S III in 4K, which is 3840 by 2160. Drop it in, resize it, export one final time, and now I've got something that I can just drag into Premiere Pro that's ready to go. Once I've got the placement of the camera screen just right, I'll make a preset which I can drag and drop onto it that'll put it right where it needs to be every time. One other cool thing about this is that you can actually plug this into your camera monitor and send it from there. So if you wanna be able to see the camera feed off to the side and transmit it to somebody else across the room, it's totally doable. All right guys, that's it for today. And be sure to check out the rest of the series if you're interested in learning more about this camera. Until then, Happy recording.